Tiny Toas! Well, kinda. Today, we're gonna be taking an in-depth look at the Bionicle 2001 Turaga. We're going to build them, review them, and then give them a score. Let's jump into it. Hey everyone, I'm Christian from All Out Brick. If this is the first time you're viewing our channel, welcome to our channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Bionicle Turaga from 2001. These were released as a part of the very first wave of Bionicle back nearly two decades ago. The actual lore behind the Turaga themselves is that after being a Toa and fulfilling their destiny, they chose to give up their Toa powers and then became Turaga. In the case of these six Turaga, they were formerly the Toa Metro. They still had access to the powers of the Noble Kanohi as well as weak elemental powers. I think of them as kind of like professional sports players who become coaches because their fighting days are over, but they're still there to pass on all of their wisdom to the next generation of Toa. Taking a look at the packaging, we can see that the Turaga all come in nearly identical gray boxes, with the only difference being the box art depicting the model inside on various edges of the box. On the back of the box, we can see a picture of all six Turaga, as well as an image of the combination model. Inside, we receive a bundle of pieces along with the instructions, which are folded up, and some advertisement material from 2001. The instructions all take up one side of this printed sheet, with the other side containing a pretty cool poster image of the Toa and a Turaga. All six Turaga are boxed exactly the same, so no need to go through each of them. Let's get right into the build. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We finished building all six of the Turaga. It probably took only like 10 minutes. I mean, at most, they're only like 26, 27 pieces each. So fairly quick builds, obviously. But as you can see, they look pretty cool. I mean, they're, they all have their own. They have the same color schemes as the Toa, but their masks are the different color. Like they're kind of inverted, whereas their masks are the color of their Toa's limbs, if that makes sense. So for example, Toa Tahu, his arms are orange. For Turaga Vakama, his mask is orange. So it's pretty cool, the little bit of smart planning there. I think it's cool. They all have like a super distinct look. If you look from one to the next, even though they're so small, they definitely have a very, very good amount of distinct like variety between them each. Like this man Onua over like Onua is he like he's tall. Like he uses number five axles for his legs. Like and then you have Wenua who uses these tiny little like axles and he's puny. He's like half the size. And all of their weapons are pretty cool too. I mean at least they're some of them are variations. I mean look Matt's house got like his little saw like uh Lewa's got an axe. Tahu has his fire sword, Vakama has a little fire stick with a little lantern on the top of it. Onua has a hammer, so, and Nuju has an ice pick. So as you can see, like there's some connections to the Toa, obviously. They come from the same village, and these were former Toa, so they still have a little bit of fight in them, but you know, their days are over. So their main function, there's one main function to all of them, and that is by pressing a lever on the back of them you can swing their arms up and down. Kind of similar to how the Toa had their rotation with the Technic gear, but this uses a rubber band to bring it back into place. And honestly, I think this is really cool. Um, I don't know why they chose, I guess the limits of the size of the model is what made them go this route instead of doing the ro like some sort of rotation method. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, duh. Uh, the size is what made them not be able to rotate, but I think the rubber band is really fine. Uh, obviously they can break and they can stretch and so over time they won't be as like quick of a movement, but you know, straight out of the box, they're pretty cool. Um, they're definitely, I like that feature. The other thing is their, this thing is a little disappointing is that their other arm is supposed to rotate, like position it, uh, but there's no friction on the pin that they included. So it kind of just drops back to the, its original position, no matter how you pose it. So that's a little unfortunate, but I don't think it takes away from the fact that these guys are, these, these are really cool. I think they're really awesome. Uh, they're so small, but they, they, they have such distinct features between them. It's, they're not all the same. They're different and they connect to the Toa, but I also feel like you could get these without getting the Toa and be completely fine with Bionicle and having like, just like your village with the Matoran and then these guys. Uh, I feel like that's completely fine. The Toa are like the big baddie, like not the big baddies. The Toa are like, they're bigger, uh, you know, they're bigger. I do want to point one thing out about these guys. Uh, I found this design choice pretty interesting because the Toa obviously have like their shoes or their, their feet, whatever you want to call them. 
the uh, the Taraga, they just use heads. Now, I don't know if that's, like, intentional. Like, they're using the heads of their, like, enemies. as the, Like, that's pretty twisted if that's what it is. But I feel like that, like, th there's definitely an interesting design behind the head being the feet. Like, there's got to be a reason behind it. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Maybe somebody knows. But if they're wearing their enemies' heads as shoes, like, you don't want to mess, like, I don't want to run into these guys, like, if they're doing that. As I stated earlier, pretty nice sets. They're definitely really cool for being such small sets. They released for around, like, 3 or $4, I think. So, 3 or $4 each for these. Like, those are pretty cool. Like, their masks are really nice, too. I like their masks. i not entirely sure, but I still might have to think about it a little bit. I might like their masks better than the Toa's masks. I think there's just a cooler design behind them. Um, there's a little bit of extra detail going on in here. And I like. The, I think the colors are pretty cool too. Like that solid color is a little bit, I feel like this is, this is a little bit better, I think. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Like the Toa Mata, the Taraga include a combination model. The only difference this time around is that the instructions aren't included with the sets like they were for the Tewamata. Instead, the instructions were actually never made, but I was able to get a hold of some on Biosector, and I'll put a link to them in the description below so you guys can access it too. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna disassemble all six of these, and we're going to build the combination model, the Taraga Nui. Here we go. As you can see, I just wrapped up the Taraga Nui build. Now, unfortunately, this model combination is only a hypothetical in terms of the Bionicle Cannon. None of them actually ended up existing, but if they did, they would basically be a juiced up Taraga. They have greater physical strength and greater mental strength than a normal Taraga, and they're able to access all of the Noble Mask powers because it has all six masks. So yeah, this thing would be, do some damage if it was real. I don't know why, they never existed in canon or they didn't actually make instructions. After doing the build, I think it was probably because it was a pretty complicated model. This build in comparison to the regular Turaga builds was much, much more complex. So I think that might have steered them off because having such easy sets to build and then having a tougher combination model would have been probably an issue in terms of the age listing or whatever. But this was also a fan-made instruction, so maybe they just didn't do it too efficiently. There were some hard steps and some things that were a little harder to see than others. So I could see that being why they didn't actually make it, but it's a shame that they didn't even exist in canon. They were only just theoretical in canon. But looking at this model now, these features, um, it has pretty pretty cool features. It has much like the Toa uh, Mata combination models did, the Toa Kaita, much like they kind of built further on the features included with the base models. This does the same. Instead of having one arm being able to swing up and down, it has two arms that are able to, and they're both independently controlled. So you could do both at once or one or the other, but it functions the same as the regular Turaga swing. The legs, they don't pivot, unfortunately. This is, um, I don't know why they wouldn't have built it into pivot because the legs of a regular Turaga can pivot. So maybe it's just for stability, but this neck can kind of tilt, like this neck, you can tilt his neck forward and backwards. And that's held in by rubber bands that swing it back into place. He's kind of like naturally like lean back. It's kind of a, a goofy posture, but I don't understand the purpose of him being able to tilt down, but they did include that. When his mask is kind of free, it just kind of swings up and down. It's not really held in place like the other arm, like the other ones that take place on the arms, and they kind of look like shoulder pads and stuff. Like this dude is bulky. Like he, I would not want to run into an alley with with a uh, Taraga Nui sitting there because you know. He can do some damage. He's pretty bulky. He's probably about the same height, maybe a tiny bit shorter than a regular Toa, but I think he might be the identical height of a regular Toa. So pretty tall, pretty wide. I mean, his shoulders are probably close to as wide as he is tall, maybe like three quarters away. That He's bulky. He's got some big legs. Like he, this guy doesn't play around. As for the model itself, it has a less aesthetically pleasing appearance. Um, it's kind of, it kind of has like a thrown together look. Like it still keeps that Taraga look where the center's this black, uh, like core black with the colored arms, but it definitely doesn't look as polished as some of the other models or the combination models that we've seen before. So 
mm, the combination, I understand why they left it out now. But that being said, it is a pretty cool hypothetical uh, thing to the cannon, and it could definitely be a pretty big problem. It's a juggernaut. As for the prices of the Turaga, used, they're going to run you around 7 to $10, which really isn't much more than their release of, like, I think it was $4 or $3, their initial release. So used, they're about $7. New, they're around $20 to $30, depending on which one you get. And maybe one will be cheaper. It also depends. That's the prices as of 2020. So they really didn't get that much more expensive. They're much more affordable than, say, the Toa, if you want to get them brand new. But I think they're 100% uh, a worthy investment if you're a Bionicle person, if you're just looking for like a cool model for like a little kid or something. These are the way to go. I think that they're fantastic. All right, gotta give a score. Gotta give a score. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 8 out. I'm gonna go 8 out. I think that they're better than the Toa. If you're a Bionicle person, they're an inexpensive addition to your collection and they deliver on the content. Same for if you like Lego, but you're not as into a Bionicle. They're a great introduction to Bionicle. They're not expensive, like I said. And yeah, I, th I think they're fantastic. So 8 that's your review. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Be the first to see all of our future content. Also check us out at our website and on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Until next time, stay bricking.